Britain is stuck in the past, but I think America can learn a lot from it. Hi everyone, it's me. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Alana and I'm a Canadian, but I have been living here in the UK for the last seven years. Loads of people ask me over the years, <laughs> um, why? <laughs> why do you like the UK? And that's a tough question. Something that always comes to mind for me is the UK has a real appreciation for its history and I love it. There are so many obvious connections in the UK to the past. We're not talking subtle nods. We are talking like full fledged slap in the face. <laughs> and a large part of British culture involves looking backwards. But I think that is kind of a positive. And we are not just talking about preserved Roman ruins, okay? Or castles or cathedrals or like the real obvious stuff. I'm talking about the day-to-day -day things that I experience as a foreigner living in the UK. So without further ado, let's go. Now first up, something that I think is so steeped in history for obvious reasons has to do with the royal family. In, in particular, in terms of recent history, the king's coronation. Now, when the queen died, a lot of very historical things happened. Um, and a lot of things that I didn't really understand because I certainly had never lived through it before. One thing that I found really surprising was I, I walked into one, I sort of stumbled into a royal proclamation of the ascension of King Charles. <laughs> and once again, didn't know what that was. But it was basically a local mayor was reading the royal proclamation. So like, here he, here he, townsfolk, here's what's happening. And um, it was about King Charles becoming the new king. And they did a whole bunch of like really serious looking stuff. And then they sang, God save the king. And I've never seen anything like it. I don't want to say they did it in full costume, but it was in full costume. I actually found this historical photo from the Queen's Ascension in 1952. Um, I swear to God, the one that I stumbled upon for the King in what, 2023? Looked identical to this. It just happened to be in color. Whether you agree with the royal family or not, I think it can be quite divisive for a lot of British people. I think almost anything relating to them is very historical. And while I have mixed feelings about the royal family, um, I do appreciate that there is so much history there and there's so many like historical things that they keep alive. Does that make sense? Whether you like them or hate them, there's still that like real historical significance. And as someone who took all of the history classes allowed at my high school, I, I, do, I do like the history. <laughs> hey guys, who's hungry? Me, but I'm always hungry. Anyway, this video is sponsored by HelloFresh. Now there's two main reasons why I like using HelloFresh. Number one, I like to cook, but cooking actually kind of terrifies me. <laughs> And so HelloFresh is like, we got you. They send you the most straightforward recipe cards I've ever seen, photos, photos, just instructions. This one's a little bit dirty because I've already made it and it was delicious. So as someone who likes to cook, don't really have the confidence to do so, I made pesto crusted lamb steak and roast potatoes and it was delicious because I had the most perfect instructions. <laughs> Number two on why I like using HelloFresh is because quite simply, I'm tired often. <laughs> I hope that's not just me. So the other day I had kind of a miserable day. Um, it came dinner time. I was exhausted and miserable and difficult to be around. So I made this. This is the Korean style gojujang beef fried rice. It said, hey, it's 20 minutes and it was. So in 20 minutes with very minimal, like mental effort, everything was ready for me. Everything was like measured out and everything. I could have this dish, never made it before. It was very straightforward. It was absolutely delicious. And I made it in 20 minutes. So for those days where I just physically cannot bring myself to pick a recipe 
to go to the supermarket and buy the things to measure them out and weigh everything and like sometimes it's just not gonna happen but I also don't want to have fast food so this to be fair I made these ones as well um, and I really truly meant to film them <laughs> I did but then I just ate them <laughs> so we had a zesty breaded sea bass and we also had the pesto crusted lamb steak they are absolutely delicious very simple to follow and I had a great time and guess what HelloFresh has given us a discount so if you would like to try it for yourself link in the description my code is alana60 okay you're gonna get 60 percent off 60 six zero off of your first box and then 25 percent off your next eight boxes we also have a qr code that you can scan to get your discount how fun how simple anyway i like hellofresh if you would like to use them and enjoy some new recipes Feel free, link in the description, QR code, whatever you like, Atlanta 60, don't forget. All right, have a great time. Hope you eat something wonderful. Um, but let's get back to our video. I don't know if it's just me, but every few months I come into contact with Morris dancing, whether I want to or not. For those who haven't had the pleasure, <laughs> Morris dancing is a very traditional English folk dancing when i've seen it it's usually like a smallish group um typically of older men um and they're kind of like jumping around dancing maybe they have bells or they have sticks or handkerchiefs but it's like this choreographed english folk dance did you know the earliest surviving mention of Morris dance is dated back to 1448 and records the payment of seven shillings to Morris dancers by Goldsmiths Company in London. Incredible. 1448. And that's just the first written reference. One of the things that I absolutely love and I really appreciate is that people put the time and the effort to keep these things alive. So anytime I go to some sort of festival or a market or like a community event or anything, especially in the summertime, um, I see Morris dancing. It's still going, people still do it. And I, I really appreciate that. This next segment, I just wanna call Woman at Yoga. <laughs> Now, I wish I had asked her more questions, but basically this is what happened. I started going to yoga class because this year it was like, I wanna try new things, wanna put myself out there, get out of my comfort zone, um, and trying yoga was one of those things. So I've been going to a class, love it by the way, 10 out of 10 do recommend. And there's this older woman in the, in the lesson and she was talking about how that weekend they're going, I believe, to bath because she does this traditional historical dance as a hobby and there's some sort of festival and you go to bath and they get like fully dressed in like appropriate time, appropriate clothing, historical costumes and they do this very specific traditional dance. And I couldn't believe it. And this was her hobby. <laughs> this is what she did on her spare time. I guess this one is actually quite close to Morris dancing. There's a lot of dance. I didn't mean to have a lot of dancing in this video. I just thought it was so interesting. We were just sitting there like waiting for the lesson to begin. And she's like, by the way, I do this traditional dance thing. And I'm just like, oh my God. <laughs> Another thing that is both in the past and in the present are town criers. Do you know when town criers can be traced back to? I wrote this down because I knew I was gonna mess it up. The town crier or bellman can be traced back to at least medieval times. Two bellmen appear in the Bayeux Tapestry, which depicts the invasion of England by William of Normandy and the Battle of Hastings in 1066. This is something that I learned about in history class at school in a textbook. However, you can still find town criers here in the UK today. Most of the times they come out for, like Morris dancing, festivals, community events, gatherings, markets, parties, like some sort of event. But Chester, shout out to Chester, is anyone here from Chester? Chester still has their town crier. Incredible. Even though this is not necessarily a daily occurrence for many towns and villages and cities around the UK, it is something that is still 
alive. Like, it's still there. It's crazy old, but people are still trying to keep it, to keep it going. And I respect that. Another way that Britain is very much stuck in the past has to do with historical food. Now, I like to cook. And even more than that, I like to eat. <laughs> And over the years, especially here on this YouTube channel, I have learned so much about British culture through food, um, loads of different things we've made and tried and taste tested over the years, and I just love it. I hope you guys do too, because I, I make a lot of those videos. One year in particular, I remember I made bread sauce. Somebody in the community mentioned it. I'd never heard of it before, um, but I thought, let me try. <laughs> and bread sauce can actually be traced back to the Middle Ages when people were looking for ways to use up leftover bread. And some people still have it today, which is absolutely wild. Do you have bread sauce with your Christmas dinner? Leave a comment down below. What about trifle? Do you like a trifle? Did you know that first appeared in cookbooks in the 16th century? What about a Sunday roast? Who doesn't love a Sunday roast, eh? Now, the concept of Sunday roast has been around for a long time, but a more like modern version of it, do you know when it came to prominence? Can I remember the date? No, I'm gonna have to look at it. King Henry VII in 1485. <laughs> when was the last time you had a Sunday roast? Was it last Sunday? There are so many traditional foods and drink and meals and snacks and all sorts of stuff that have huge connections to the past that are very historical, very traditional, and I do appreciate that people still eat them today. Do I like all of them? No, but that's okay, because we're gonna try them anyway. I think in particular, this one stands out to me a lot because I like to eat, don't know if you knew that, but also as a Canadian, we don't really have traditional meals. We don't really have like historical food because we're Canada. We haven't had the time to create those things. So coming here to the UK where there's just so much, there's literally so much. I've, I've made a lot of them already. I will continue to make more of them because I just love it. Another way Britain is very much stuck in the past can be seen through town celebrations. So I live in Kent. That is my life experience. Um, perhaps you are in a different part of the UK or a different country. That's pretty cool. For me, I've seen things like the Sweeps Festival, which is kind of wild. Rochester, I love it. I love you, Rochester. So Sweeps Festival is all about chimney sweeps and the historical trade of chimney sweeping. There's lots of music and dancing and people dress up and it is just kind of wild. It feels very Charles Dickens to me, which makes sense because he has a very tight connection to Rochester and again, history. It's literally everywhere. In Kent, we also have the Whistable Oyster Festival and the um, blessings of the water, which is very cool. So Whitstable, of course, is probably one of, if not the most prominent place for oysters in England. So every year they have this festival and the blessing of the waters. And I'm like, okay, that's very cool. Why? Apparently it is around St. James Day, um, which, Makes sense because St. James is considered the patron saint of oyster trade, which is incredible. What I was reading online was saying that people have been eating oysters in Whitstable for a very long time. We're talking like Julius Caesar's invasion of Britain. Um, so it's just very cool that we still keep up these traditions, these festivals, oysters, love them or hate them. Personally, I cannot swallow them, but I've tried. <laughs> I just think it's really cool. One final thing, I know there's like a million of them, I just wanted to talk about some of the festivals that I've experienced. So, Whitstable is absolutely lovely. I have a video on my channel, got lots of videos on my channel about Rochester, and I went to Favisham, filmed a market day video, and I'd love to talk about Favisham's market. So, Favisham was a settlement in the Doomsday Book. What? Now in 1086, within the Doomsday Book, Favisham is recorded as having 75 households, putting it in the largest 20% of settlements ever recorded. So obviously Favisham, it's old. But what I wanted to talk about is the market. 
Um, I have read, and maybe this could be disputed, that Faversham has the oldest market in England. In the Charter of Incorporation by Henry VIII in 1546, he granted, among a bunch of other stuff, that Faversham has the privilege of a market three times a week which still happens today. So you go to Faversham, great town, very historic. It has a market. Some days, you know, it's quite modest. You're like, this is cute. And then you realize how deeply historic that market is. I love it. So what about America? How can America learn from this? One thing that I thought was interesting while I was having a bit of a Google, <laughs> had a little bit of a bing, and I was looking at brands or companies, big companies. In the US, the biggest companies, the most influential companies are things like Google, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon. These are hugely innovative brands, like a big focus on technology about just like fast paced, moving forward, innovative, incredible. And then I looked at leading brands in Europe, I looked at Europe, okay, I know that's controversial. I looked at leading brands in Europe or like really influential brands, biggest brands, and things came up like Mercedes-Benz, um, Louis Vuitton, really like luxury historical brands that have been around for a very long time. My perception of the US largely is very tech focused, very innovative, innov I can't say that word, Innovation, but in relation to having that quality. Innov innovate, we're gonna skip that. There's a lot of like forward momentum. There's a lot of like, just like driving ahead, chasing that American dream. And obviously you can benefit from that. I mean, I am going to edit this video later on my American Apple laptop. And then I am going to eventually upload it to this platform called YouTube, which is an American platform, and you are going to watch it, hopefully. But I do think there is something very special about not forgetting to look backwards. Look where you came from, look how things were. Keeping some of those historical traditions and culture alive. Anyway, that was the thesis of this video. I hope it made sense. <laughs> While you can't necessarily expect to move forward if you are constantly looking to the past, I do think there is something really special and really important about appreciating the past and appreciating where you came from. I just, I think it's really special. And as a foreigner living here, I love learning about all the little intricacies and quirks and festivals and markets and historical connotations that the UK has to offer because there is just so much. Did you know that Britain is full of really weird historical competitions? Welly wagging anyone? Definitely check out this video where I react to some of Britain's oldest and strangest competitions. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, bye.